Welcome to Commando On Demand Insider with Kim Commando, your fast-paced weekly update straight from Kim's desk to your ears. I'm Mike James. Would you believe there's over a thousand different kinds of malware in the world? You know malware, that's the kind of software that takes over your computer, hijacks all your files so you can't access them, and then asks for money for you to get access back to your files. Well, we've got a guy that actually created a website to fight all that. His name is Michael Gillespie, and he has a site that will detect what kind of ransomware of those thousands that are out there is on your computer. This happens to you and how to get rid of it. So listen with a piece of paper and a pencil or pen because you're going to want to write down the name of his website if you ever do get ransomware of somebody you know does get ransomware. We're also going to talk to Itai Mayor today. Itai is the chief security officer at Insights. And it's more about ransomware and ransomware as a service. You're going to find out how these crooks, thieves get the malware how they and how actually they have customer service departments and everything else that allow their customers quote customers uh it's probably more safe to say targets uh, are going to pay them so it's all about malware today we also have a great question about using software to add voice recognition to write a book if you've ever thought about that and can you set up a pc to record automatically a webinar or a Zoom meeting for you. And by the way, this is not the nationally syndicated Kim Commando show on over 400 radio stations nationwide and worldwide on American Forces Radio. Uh, Every ship at sea gets the Kim Commando show. The podcast version of the show is available at GetKim.com. And right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial if you use promo code Kim. So again, go to GetKim.com. Get on the Commando community so you can listen to the podcast and much more. Just use promo code Kim for your free 30-day trial. All right, I'm sure by now you've heard about ransomware. Those are those attacks that take over computers of people like you, but also, you know, businesses, hospitals, big cities, small towns, government agencies, and just about anywhere else you can think of. And ransomware attacks are up by a whopping 41% over the last year. Here's how it works. Criminals plant malicious software that encrypts all of the files on your computer. And then unless you have a backup, you have to pay the criminal money, often in Bitcoin, to get the files back. And that's where the term ransomware comes into play. But what if you didn't want to pay the ransom? Or maybe you don't have the money to pay even if you wanted to pay. Even the FBI has said there are times you just need to pay the criminals to get your files back. And a stat that I saw said that about 70% of people actually do. And that's where this knight in software shining armor comes into play. There's this young, amazing man by the name of Michael Gillespie. He swoops in to help you. And Michael says there's about a thousand different types of ransomware out there. And Michael works night and day on his days off to come up with software that lets you off the hook. And get this, he does it for free. That's right. His decryption tools are free. Michael, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. What's the biggest change in ransomware that you've seen, say, over the last, I don't know, year or so? Hi, Kim. It's great to be here. So ransomware has definitely been a evolution in the malware place, basically. They're getting more creative. Um, The last few years, I'd say they're definitely shifting their focus from the personal sector, instead of just shotgun blast attacking anyone and everyone, they're kind of honing more into the businesses and the local governments, the other municipalities, schools, kind of drilling down into where they can get more bang for their buck, so to say. You know, I heard that on the dark web, there's like we have software as a service on the regular web, right? Um, where, for example, if you're not familiar with software as a service, it's like where you use Microsoft Word and Office 365 or Google Docs or Photos or whatever it is. Because there used to be a time, maybe you remember this, that you'd actually go to the software store, and you'd get a box with a manual and a disk, and then you'd take the disk back home and you'd install it. So now we have software as a service. But I had heard on the dark web that there's now ransomware as a service that you can just check a couple of boxes and then suddenly you'll be in the ransomware business. 
Yep, exactly. Those are, and that's exactly what it's called is a RAS, R-A-A-S, ransomware as a service. Um, they come in different variants um, in terms of how their pyramid scheme works. Uh, sometimes it's a kit where you just pay the bad guy, say a thousand dollars. He gives you everything, all the tools you need. Um, pretty much you do the work to spread it. Um, other times they take a cut of what you, you know, you just sign up and say you infect, you know, a, a couple of businesses and they pay the, the guy who wrote the software probably gets like a 20% cut or something. And then you get the rest of it. And then it's, I mean, it's, it's an entire empire. They have, um, they have their own support staff um, that runs the chat to talk with victims to, you know, try to quote unquote, help them. So to say Um, they've got, you know, I'm sure it ties into other criminal activity with money, you know, money mules. Um, It's, it's just crazy. Well, that was astounding to me when I had heard that. So somebody gets hit with ransomware and that there's a live chat line that pops up and says, Hey, if you're not sure how to pay us in Bitcoin, you can give us a call or just we'll (laughs) help you right now. Yep. And so where are those operations generally located? I mean, I can only, most of the time it's in other countries out of our, you know, uh, the U.S.'s jurisdiction, so to say. Um, I don't personally track that type of stuff, um, but I know that a lot of it are in certain uh, three-letter regions. <laughs> I see. I get it. Um, so ransomware, somebody gets it on their computer. What's the first thing that they should do? So I typically recommend uh, as much as cliche as it is to not panic. Um, I see a lot of times that victims panic and they just end up shooting themselves in the foot um, by deleting the malware, um, shutting down everything, wiping everything, you know, completely cleaning their computer, which is the the right thing to do if you're infected with regular malware. If you just get a regular spyware infection or something like a key logger or Trojan or something, that is the right thing to do. You know, scorch earth policy, especially in corporate situations. But sometimes with ransomware, I really, or like other people like me or antivirus softwares that work on fighting ransomware, we really need the malware itself to determine, you know, how did it encrypt your files? Um, The, Kind of the quote that I have uh, is typically like when you go to the ER after you accidentally swallowed something from under the sink, the the doctor wants to know what you drank. Um, He wants to see the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah, that's always helpful. And and the ransomware comes in various forms. Like I know that there's one that's that's circulating right now that says, uh, you know, we saw you on your webcam doing something sneaky and uh, in the sex rooms or what have you. And and here's an old password of yours. What are some other uh, tactics that the ransomware purveyors are now using? I've, I've seen so many different tactics that are just, a, you know, they kind of follow the curve of other malware, so to say, uh, whether it is the, the phishing links that you're referring to, um, you know, um, Obviously, we've seen with with COVID, um, we've seen like COVID themed um, documents being fakely produced. Um, I actually did see recently um, there was a ransomware that included an official uh, WHO document about like one of their reports with the ransomware, but it was more like a decoy. So like as soon as it ran, you thought that you were, you know, it pops up with this who report and you're reading it while in the background, it's encrypting your files. Um, (laughs) Then, you know, of course that's not the only way they get in, but that is a huge way is, is, is phishing. Um, Just, you just have to convince one poor Sally at the HR desk or, (laughs) or at the front office to click on that link. And then next thing you know, the whole network's infected. Um, Of course, there's, more sophisticated ways that they could get in with, uh, you know, if the network is actually exposed with like, uh, you might hear remote desktop protocol, RDP. That's a way that a lot of businesses allow to externally reach into the network and control the machines that they need to, you know, work on. But if you can get into it and you don't secure it, right. Someone else can just as easily get in and control the machine and do whatever they want. Um, Are are they using any type of social engineering tactics? 
Um, I believe so. With the when it comes to the fishing, I haven't um, I haven't seen too many that are super targeted. Um, they do still happen though, if they have enough, uh, if it's a big enough uh, a big enough target for them to focus on. Okay, so okay, so somebody contacts you and they say, "Listen, I've got this." They give you the malware. How long does it take for you to say unravel the puzzle and figure out how to decrypt somebody's files? It can widely vary. Um, I will preface with the disclaimer that I can't decrypt everything. Um, you know, if, if the the bad guys do their job, so to say, correctly, then no one on the planet but them can actually recover the files. Um, but if, let's say, it is one that does have a flaw, and pretty much a flaw means that the criminals made a mistake. <laughs> um, I've had ones where I've gotten a hold of it. If it's a really stupid mistake, I could have a decryptor written in like 10 minutes. Um, other ones may require a little more analysis if it's a more complicated ransomware. They have a lot more cryptography going on. I have to figure out what the cryptographic algorithms are, how the algorithm works. If they messed up the algorithm, they didn't use it correctly, they spun their own cryptography, which is something you should never do. <laughs> um, unless you're a bad guy, please do it. Um, That's good, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> okay, unless you're a bad guy, then we really need you to do that. So just forget everything we just said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there's ones that I've analyzed for weeks until I found a flaw. Um, it just it widely varies. Hey, don't forget, if you've got a question about something digital, you can get Kim's unbiased advice, and it's advice that you can trust. America's digital pro, Kim Commando, and our nationally syndicated radio show. You just go to commander.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, click on the Be a Caller button. We're going to ask you your name and for a couple of details about your question, and then Manny will get in touch with you. We'll set up a time where you can be on the show, ask your question on the show. It is fun. You can call your friends and let them know that you're going to be on the show, and that's, again, the Be a Caller button in the upper right at commando.com. Just ahead, it's more of Kim's conversation with Michael Gillespie and how he got started fighting against ransomware and why he's choosing to do this for free. And later on, we're going to talk to Itai Mayor. He's the chief security officer at Insights. We're going to hear more about ransomware software as a service and how criminals get a hold of this stuff. Coming up on Commando On Demand Insider. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Tell me about your background. I mean, do you have like this amazing degree in cryptography and <laughs> uh, computer science? And I mean, because I just I visualize like, you know, this is something that you'd probably have to like really practice at and learn. Uh, definitely practice. Um, I have no degrees. I actually I graduated high school and that was it. Um, I actually had a job in IT when I was 16 as a sophomore in high school. Um, so I already kind of had my career. Um, it was kind of funny, just like senior year, like everyone in, uh, everyone in my class, you know, final week, everyone's writing on the board, what college they're going to, what they're doing. And I was just like, I've already got my, my career. I've already got a job, got a girlfriend, got a car. My life was set. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that girl you married, right? Yep. <laughs> Eight years now. That's awesome. So you have these tools on your website, then anybody can just tap into them if they get hit with ransomware. How do they even know which one to download? Yep. So um, I have a I have a website that I built, uh, goodness, almost three or four years ago. It's called ID Ransomware. And the purpose of it is to, first off, identify what ransomware encrypted your files. This is 
in most cases, the most critical part is figuring out once again, what bottle did you drink from under the sink? Um, <laughs> so it identifies, um, you know, based on what the extension is, um, what, you know, what email address or Bitcoin address was in your ransom note. Um, there's a whole bunch of other technical stuff I could go into on that, but it first identifies what the ransomware is or most likely is. Um, cause in the last years there's been, you know, out of the thousand or so ransomware I've seen, a lot of them are copying each other and they kind of make it hard to determine. So, um, it does a lot more technical stuff. It'll provide you with a clear cut status if it's possible saying, yes, this is, you got lucky this time. This one might be decryptable or no, this has been analyzed to be secure. They didn't have any flaws or mistakes. Um, or there's also the state of, I don't know. Um, there's like an unknown status for a lot of ransomware that might not have been analyzed yet. Um, I draw from not just my own analysis, but if uh, there's a public analysis from, you know, say Kaspersky or McAfee or another antivirus vendor um, who is, you know, taking a deep dive into that particular strain, um, I draw off of their information, any other public information, if keys were released from law enforcement, um, if someone else built a decryptor, I'm completely vendor agnostic on my site. If someone's got a free decryptor out there, I'll link to it, basically. See, I, and I think that's fascinating because, I mean, let's just face it, you could be making some serious money right now. <laughs> I mean, Instead of just, even if you just said like, okay, so if, you know, you're going to pay $300 worth of Bitcoins in order to get your files back and, you know, why don't you be nice and give me 15 bucks, you know, or 30 bucks or something like that. Um, because I also read that, that you and your lovely bride, that you live in a modest two bedroom home. I think you purchased it for $116,000. You went to Peoria, Illinois on your honeymoon. Is that right? Yep. We stayed in a hotel there. Um, it was actually pretty nice. We got, uh, got like the lover suite, but we were actually under 21. So I had to get management, uh, permission because they were, the lover suite came with like all the champagne and stuff. So I had to get like a written exemption to just, I just asked for like sparkling wine, like <laughs> some type of sparkling drink instead. <laughs> And see, and here you are, like decrypting files. You're like, okay, I know I'm not old enough to drink yet, but here's where it's at. <laughs> How come you don't charge for this? How come you're doing it all for free? It's pretty much just the the principle of it. Um, you know, the, I, I've been quoted before. I don't want to take advantage of those taken advantage of already. Um, so it's just kind of the honor in it, I guess. And I do get, um, I do have a donation link on my site and I've had overwhelming support the last year, especially, um, a lot of people have donated to me and I, I am definitely grateful for that. It, it's actually pulled me through a couple of, uh, uh, couple of problems that have happened in the last year. Yeah. I mean, you know, money's tight all over, right? Um, mm -hmm. So where do you think the ransomware purveyors are going to move to next? I don't know. I hear that uh, tr uh, there's some pretty good discounts on yachts right now. So they could probably go anywhere they want. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not too many people are sailing. That is that is kind of like the inside joke I've had with a lot of, uh, you might have seen like there's some ransomwares, like one was Tesla Crypt was a big one. They just out of the nowhere just released all the master keys and said, we're done. Um, so that was like the inner joke was like, they they probably made enough money. They bought their yacht and they're just sailing off now. Well, that would make sense. Um, do you see anything that like individuals are being hit with now as a new wave? Um, pretty much when it comes to, um, cause like I mentioned how, uh, ransomware has really shifted to the business sector lately. Um, the bigger, bigger targets basically, or even small businesses, um, just, it's always the lowest hanging fruit basically. But when it comes to um, like residential victims um, lately, there has been a very large uptick in infections from pirated software. Um, the rants like before it's always been known that, you know, there's, if you pirate software, there's a good chance it's going to have malware because you're, you know, you're trusting guys who are, breaking the law and downloading their, their code. 
Um, but now they're starting to bundle ransomware with it. So you're kind of getting a double whammy. Any other advice you have for people who are listening right now? Backups, backups, backups. I preach over and over the importance of backups. Um, you know, I do get a lot of people that are like, well, it's so hard to back up. I mean, there's honestly very little reason to not have a flash drive laying around. They're so cheap nowadays. You can get, you can get a flash drive for like 10 or 20 bucks. Just drop all your most important pictures on it, stick it in the fire safe. Um, or cloud, you know, cloud backups are so cheap nowadays. Um, you can get them for like, Two two to five dollars a month is definitely well worth it to to have that peace of mind that and it's not just ransomware that could destroy your data you know computer the hard drives crash all the time I worked in IT um, you know I replaced hard drives day in day out that completely died can't get anything unless you send it out to the recovery lab send it into a white room spend five thousand dollars to get the data back that's not even ransomware um, you know natural catastrophes happen. Laptops get lost, destroyed. I mean, it it's just not even worth the risk. Just it's it's just so cheap nowadays. It's like insurance. You know, you may never need it, but when you do, you're sure glad that you have it, right? Exactly. That's 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 a great comparison. Thank you, Michael. You know, such incredible work that you're doing. Please keep it up. Uh, you're helping so many people. You're appreciated. We need you. And again, thanks for spending some time with us. Sure thing, anytime. If you love the digital lifestyle and love keeping up with all the breaking tech news and security alerts and data breaches so you can tell your friends and family kind of what's going on and what to watch out for, we've got you covered with the Commando newsletters. They keep you right up to date, and you can get yours at commando.com, which is K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on the Get the Newsletter button, And it's a double opt-in, so we'll send you an email to make sure that you want the newsletters, and then you've got them. We've got also specialty newsletters about Apple and Android, many, many others, including The Current, which is just what it says. It keeps you up to date on what's going on, and there is no advertising in The Current. It is read it just as you get it. And again, that's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. Try it out and see if you like it. We believe you will. It's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Hey, just ahead, it's Kim's conversation with Itai Mayor. He's the chief security officer at Insights. He's going to tell us how criminals get a hold of this ransomware and how they use it. That's coming up on Commando on Demand Insider. Itai Mayor, and Itai is the chief security officer at Insights, and it's no great secret that scams have increased anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000%, depending upon who you believe. And I don't know if you know about this, that there's something called software as a service. And I don't know if you remember, but there was a time many, many moons ago when you'd go to a software store and you would get a box and there would be a disc and there'd be a manual on the inside. And then you take it home and you'd install it on your computer. And now you just go on to Office 365, Salesforce or wherever, and you use it online. And that's called software as a service. When I read about something called ransomware as a service, that's when I knew that I needed to get our good friend Itai Mayor on the line to tell us exactly what's going on with ransomware as a service. How does it work? Itai, thank you so much for joining us. Is it as easy signing up as, say, for like a Google account? Yeah, thank you for having me again, uh, Kim. It, it is pretty easy. I mean, once you get to one of these underground uh, forums, uh, it's a matter of advertisement. And if you see something that you like, it's simply contacting the seller and then acquiring the software and, and the service. Actually, it's, it's more a service than it is uh, a software in many cases. So we see this collaboration between uh, different uh, hacking groups. And so, so it just it just astounds me that you could go on to a place on the dark web and say, "I'd like to target what a million people with this type of campaign." How much does something like that cost? Well, the cost really varies on on the types of the services. So we see different types of offerings. For example, um, you'll see people say, "Okay, I have uh, ten thousand computers infected in California," or "I have." several hospitals uh, infected uh, all over the U.S. 
who wants to buy access into them? And then they do what we call uh, paper infection. So you can put whatever it is. It can be ransomware. It can be a Trojan. It can be any kinds of viruses on this. Um, on the other side, uh, you can see sometimes ransomware groups who go and look for these uh, uh, infected computers to just deploy their specific ransomware. And again, there are many kinds of businesses here. Some of them are for rent. Some of them uh, you buy. And some of them you just split whatever you make out of the uh, ransomware attacks. So, folks, if you're wondering why ransomware is on the increase, <laughs> just know this is why, because it's so easy. Itai, do you need like a, a programming background in order to suddenly become this person that starts going after ransomware victims? Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, it has become so easy. You know, if you look about 10 years back, uh, there was the, the big revolution in the criminal underground where we moved to uh, what we called fraud as a service and then everything as a service. Uh, today, you can go as an um, almost uh, untechnical, uh, un, un, with no knowledge uh, uh, person to one of these forums, and you can just buy the different elements. You can buy a service that will help you spam. You can buy from uh, another group the piece of ransomware. You can buy infected computers. It's, it's actually that easy, and it's actually interesting. I'm looking right now in, uh, on my computer in one of these, forums uh, where somebody said, hey, I need, I need help with ransom. I've infected all kinds of entities around the world, actually, and I need help with putting ransom on, on them and collecting the money. And what's interesting, he ends this pretty long section by saying, before you talk about ethics, I'm not using ransomware on individual people. I'm targeting large companies and government agencies. So that's kind of his excuse, like, I'm, don't talk to me about ethics. I'm not doing this to private people. I'm doing this to the government or to... Yes. So all of a sudden, that makes it okay. Um, So always have a backup, folks. Okay, Make sure that your systems are updated. Make sure you have two-factor authentication. And Itai, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you spending a few moments with us to make us all more aware about the important need to protect ourselves online. Hi there, Jimmy. Hello there. Welcome. What's going on? Well, I've got a question about speech recognition software, and I figured I'd just uh, take it to the top and see what uh, Kim Commando Show had to say to help me find a piece of software that will understand the way I speak with my southern accent. I'm going to be working on a book that I'm going to be in a project with, so I want to tell the story in my own words, and a book is somewhere between sixty and 70,000 words. So as we go through that, I want to tell it in my own words, but turn it over to somebody else who can have a written text, if you would, that would be sure. reasonably understandable and try to knock this collaboration out as quick as possible. Well, I, I didn't notice an accent, Jimmy. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, I normally, you know, as a regular listener, you know, I like to give at least three suggestions, right? But uh, there's really only one terrific product that I would recommend for you, and it's called Dragon Home. And what's nice is that you're going to train the software for your dialect, okay? And you're, it's going to ask you to say certain phrases, uh, some paragraphs, and then some words. And it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes for you to train the software for your particular mode of speech. And then once it does, they say that it's like 99% recognition. So you're going to be totally good to go with this. Um, it's about... It's about $150. They have a $300 version, but it's not really necessary. So it's Dragon Home, $150. And they have a legal version, too, for anybody who's listening in the legal field. And we'll put a link to it over at Kim Show on the website. That's commando.com and hit the link that says Kim Show. Uh, Let's see. Back to the phones we go with David in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Hi there, David. Hey, thank you for taking my call. You betcha. What's going on? Yeah, um, I'm an owner of a small business here, and uh, lately with the COVID stuff that uh, got going, uh, it seems like there's so many people or organizations, companies that have started uh, posting webinars free on the Internet, you know, and I'm getting these emails right and left on all these different types of uh, webinars, of course, with the type of business that I run, it's a security business, I'm 
I'm always uh, busy running and never really can set a time that I can sit down and, you know. Actually look at it. Yeah, I hear you. I get it. My question is, is there a way I could, if I know ahead of time the, the time and date and everything, or even do the registration to get set up to be in that webinar, is there any way I could uh, set up that computer to record it? You know, that's a great question. And I'm so glad that you called um, because I'm sure there are a lot of people like you that say, you know what, I'd like to go to this webinar and I want to learn more about X, Y, or Z, but I just can't sit there in front of it because I've got other commitments. Um, what you're going to be, what, yeah, what you're going to use, you're going to use screen recording software. Okay. Now you can't just use any, you know, freebie out there because the, it doesn't have, generally the freebies don't have the features that you need because you're going to need to be able to schedule your ski, your screen recording. Okay. So in the screen recording software, you can specify a specific time on a daily or weekly schedule. So, you know, leave that up wherever you're going to, wherever the webinar is, you're going to leave that up and then you're going to have it scheduled to record that screen. Um, there's a couple of programs that do that actually will do this for you. One is called Bandicam. You don't have to worry about writing this down. Manny will send you the link, but Bandicam is about 40 bucks. Now, if this is something that you really want to do, and this is something that you're going to be using a lot, um, is that there's the, the, I guess you'd say the, the standard of standards is called Camtasia, uh, and that's C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A with Camtasia. It's perfect if you're looking to record, say, live streamed events, the webinars, like you mentioned, even online gaming sessions. It's straightforward, easy to use. Um, it also does a whole bunch of other things, visual effects, voice narration, um, annotations. I mean, it's really simple to use, but it's, it's pricey. Instead of the $40 for Bandicam, it's $250. But there's a free trial you might want to check out. So those are a couple of programs that you can use to record those webinars. Also, always check the sites, too, because typically they will have archived videos for you to take a look at. And again, thank you for your call. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You get these podcasts delivered to your device automatically every time. To do that, just go to your favorite podcast player, Android or Apple, and search for K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Once you find us, there's the Command On Demand podcast. And then don't forget the Consumer Tech Update podcast, which is where you get all the latest news every Monday through Friday. And we thank you again. We'll see you next time. And here now, it's Kim with some final thoughts. If there's any good news from the lawlessness in America's major cities, it's this. Apple is making monetary contributions to help victims of police brutality, while the looters of Apple stores got much more than they bargained for. When looters broke into Apple stores, they made off with a load of Apple's iPhones, iPads, and MacBooks. But get this, every Apple product has to be first activated by Apple before it can be used. So if anyone attempts to activate a stolen iPhone, iPad, or Mac, they get this message. This device has been disabled and is being tracked, local authorities notified. The message directs the user to return the device to the store it was stolen from. No matter how long it's stored away unused, Apple never forgets. The device is permanently disabled and can never be activated. I'm Kim Commando. 